Hi, I'm Effie and this is What Effie Reads. Today I'm going to be talking about my May BTBR. First off, credit to Nina in Maddie's Discord for this idea of a title. I think it perfectly sums up my TBR for May because it's books that I may read, I may not. The idea with this TBR, there are going to be some books that are kind of must reads for this month, but also because I will be taking part in Book Netathon, which is a read a month long readathon organised by Bookish KJ which kind of takes the form of a bingo board and for each square you've got a booktuber and you've got to read a book inspired by that booktuber. So in total if I were to fill out all those squares that would make my TBR 16 books long. So I wanted to give myself options because some of these books could be a little bit on the long side. So I'll start with my must reads for May and then I will get into book netathon and my maybe choices. So first off we have the three books from subscription boxes and we also have one backlist book. Now the backlist book I haven't actually decided what I'm going to read for but for this month it will be an author whose surname begins with C so it will be this shelf just behind me. As you can see I've got quite a few options I've got some short ones and I've also got some long ones and I think it'll just depend on how I'm feeling on that specific week. As for the books from subscription boxes, the Fairy Loot book is the only one that's actually arrived yet. <laughs> oh, dropping everything. So if you are subscribed to Fairy Loot or you've already seen my video, it is The Bright and the Pale. So I will be reading that in the first month of May. And then I know what the Illumicrate book, book is, but since those books or oh, that box hasn't started shipping yet, I obviously won't spoil it for anyone here, but I'm very very excited for reading it and then again I don't know what the queer book box is I've had a bit of a nightmare with the courier I know it is on its way and I read it the third the third week of the month so it should be here by that point then I also am um, buddy reading um, with Shannon over at Head in the Books we try to do a buddy read every month and this month in our infinite wisdom we decided to tackle this one Crescent City except it's not called Crescent City is it it's House of Earth and Blood which gets called Crescent City but that's the series I think for me it will be my first time reading this book However, for Shannon, it's going to be a reread. So it's going to be interesting reading this together. And considering it's almost 800 pages, it's a fair beast to get through. So hopefully we won't have too hard a time with it. I also have two NetGalley arcs that I need to read this month. And they are A Chorus Rises by Bethany C. Morrow. And A Master of Gin by P. Jelly Clock. Sorry, uh, my brain is just not cooperating with me today. 
And those are all of the must reads for the month of May. So let's get into Book Natathon. As I mentioned before, with Book Natathon, there's a bingo board. And as you can see, for each square, there is a booktuber. There is a, a free space and one for a smaller booktuber. I haven't put a specific book for those two squares, but I have come up with some ideas for the other 14 squares. So, as you can see, I've made quite a number of notes about what I could read for each booktuber. For everyone except Maddie over at Book Browsing Blog, I've picked out two books that I'm going to put on my maybe TBR. But I do have a list of a few others I can fall back on if I'm not feeling it or if I need a longer or shorter read. So without further ado, let's get into what those books are. And I'm sorry if I don't know the names of all of these booktubers. I, I realise that I don't watch as many booktubers as I thought I did. Or maybe it's just the ones I watch haven't made this list. So, for Bookish Realm, I thought that I could read Speak. And this is the graphic novel. Speak as a book is one that I've wanted to read for a little bit. And when I saw the graphic novel, it felt like a sign. I also thought that I could pick up the yellow wallpaper. Now, I don't have a physical copy, but I'm almost certain that I have a digital copy of it on my Kindle. So that is another option for Bookish Realm. For Books and Lala, I think she's got really eclectic taste, so it's quite difficult to pick for her. The two options that I came up with for Books and Lala were... House of Holler or Only Revolutions. So House of Hollow probably seen on Kayla's channel. I believe I've seen her mentioned it a few times actually. Only Revolutions is a weird one. It's by the same author as House of Leaves. But considering that I've already read House of Leaves, I thought I'd try picking up this book instead. It is just as weird formatting wise. I know that you have to flip between the front and the back. I have attempted it once in the past without too much success. So it's, it's one that I'd like to tackle because I think it's going to be a challenge. But I may choose to pick up House of Paolo as something a little bit different instead. Oh, the lighting's going a bit strange. As the sun has finally decided to show itself today. I should probably point out as well that as an additional challenge to myself, I'm trying not to purchase additional books for this readathon. I've basically allowed myself to utilise the library, Kindle Unlimited and my physical shelves. Which adds an extra dimension because some of these book tours, I was noticing that the books that they recommend or read don't really line up with what I have easy access to. So if any of these book choices do seem a little bit odd, that's probably why. The next booktuber is Let Me In The Library. And for them, I thought that I could either read No Exit or Behind Closed Doors. 
For JD Ray Reads, my options are Way of the Argosy, obviously, a Sebastian de Castell, perfect pick for Jade. And honestly, if it wasn't that it's a, a bit of a longer book, it would be a definite for her. But I also popped on the list a maybe of A Song Below Water, which feels like a shorter book. And I need to read anyway. I, I know that A Chorus Rises is listed as book two in A Song Below Water series. However, because I haven't read A Song Before Water, I don't want to research too heavily whether it is a sequel or a companion. So I'm just going to read book one. For Becker and the Books, I thought I could either read The Emperor of the Evening Stars, which is book 2.5 in the Bargainer series, or I could use Crescent City. This beauty, which obviously I'm already reading as a buddy read. And would make it probably a little bit easier if I'm using a book I'm already reading. For How to Train Your Gavin, I think I'm probably going to read Everything Together, which is the sequel to Second Dad Summer by Benjamin Class. I'm not going to put an image of the cover on the screen because in my opinion, the cover actually contains a spoiler for Second Dad Summer. It's a book that, well, it's it's a middle grade book and it's absolutely brilliant. I loved Second Dad Summer a lot more than I expected. It's, as you probably would expect, it's about a young boy who goes to stay with his dad for the summer and doesn't like his dad's boyfriend. And there's a lot of learning about queer history included in it as well. I just thought the representation was really on point. And I also like appreciated that it had a bit more grit to it than I expected. But the other alternative is show you Show Us Who You Are by Elle McNichols. Now this is the first book on this maybe TBR list that was on my April TBR but I just haven't had a chance to get to. For The Petite Punk I have another book that was on my April TBR and I didn't manage to read and it is The Invisible Life of Addy LaRue and I also have a nice little middle grade book and it is When Life Gives You Mangoes. For Et Tu Brody my options are Mexican Gothic or Love Beyond Body, Space and Time. Like both of those I'm pretty excited to read. I'll probably end up reading the graphic novel because it is short and sweet and I think I'm going to need short and sweet but you never know, I'm maybe in the mood for Mexican Gothic. I mean, I'm always in the mood for Mexican Gothic, but I may just want to sit down and read a, a chunkier book. For Monica Kim, I, I had a harder time picking out books, but I think I'm leaning towards either Heartstopper or Skip Beat, which is a manga that one of my co-workers recommended and um, it feels like it would fit in with other things that she's recommended. For Elias I either thought I would read Middle Game or Listen to A Little Life 
I've had the audiobook of that for way too many years and not managed to get to it yet. So maybe this will be the push that I needed. For novel serendipity, I thought it could be nice to read Between the Lines, which has got lots of beautiful artwork throughout and feels like a fun, cosy read. Or I could read Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor because I haven't read any Lainey Taylor and I feel kind of bad about that. I also didn't realise that this book is incredibly floppy, which makes me really excited to pick it up actually, because you all know that I love a floppy paperback. My choice for Maddie over at Book Browsing Blog probably comes as a surprise to absolutely no one who knows what she reads, and it is Once and Future Witches. And that was the only book I wrote down for her. Although I'm sure I won't have too much trouble picking something else out if it feels like too much of a tome because it is quite chunky. In fact, I believe that the Illumicrate pick for this month, so the one that I'm waiting on at the moment, would be pretty much up Maddie Street as well. For Paperback Dreams, I thought I could read either The Poet X or Cracked Up To Be. Neither of those books I own, but I'm fairly sure that they're available on script. If not, I'll have uh, another thing, I guess. And finally, for Booked and Busy, I thought that I could read either The Deep or oops, the turn of the key. So that is all of the maybe books on my list. But I also have three books that I noticed a lot of these different booktubers have mentioned. So they're kind of maybe books to swap out, but they're also books that I would really like to read anyway. So we have Homegoing by Yar Jessie, which has been sitting on my shelves for years and years. And I'm seeing a lot of hype for Yar Jessie at the moment as Transcendent Kingdom is not long out and it has been nominated for the Women's Prize. And this was a book that multiple booktubers have mentioned either reading or going to read and are excited to pick up. I also have Amari and the Night Brothers, which I have literally not heard anyone say anything bad about. So I'm hoping that I'm able to pick that up because that seems like a very exciting one to pick up. And the final one that I've got is Legendborn. Again, this was a book that featured on a lot of different booktubers' lists. So, again, it's something that I quite possibly will pick up. However, looking at the type, it is really quite small type. And it's not a tiny book. It's pretty much 500 pages on the nose. Oh, 501 pages. But maybe I'll fancy it. I guess we will see. <laughs> so, what do you think of my maybe TBR? So if I pick up one book for each of those booktubers, and then obviously I've got the free space and the small booktuber, boxes which I could probably use some of my must reads for so that's 14 plus I've got two night galleys so 16 a buddy read so 17 and three subscription ones 20 and a physical tbr so 21 books 
do we think I will manage in May? And also, have I missed a really obvious book to read that has been inspired by one of the booktubers that I've mentioned? I will link all the booktubers in the description down below so you can check them out for yourselves. I will try and link the specific videos that have inspired me to pick these particular books. And until next time, bye!